So this episode is going to be about the camel's adaptations to living in a desert environment and also how camels are coping with climate change. So some of the most obvious adapta adaptations they have, they have are in how their body is made. So you can see that they have long legs, which allows them to travel long distances in a very energy efficient man manner. They also have very flat feet. And these are for walking across the soft sand in the deserts without sinking in. And the added advantage, it means they don't cause soil erosion. Their feet are soft. It's not like the hooves of cattle and goats, which cut up the soil and you can get soil erosion from that. They have a long neck. And the long neck enables them to reach up to about three meters in height in order to pick at food, which perhaps other animals, particularly the domestic animals, like sheep and goats and cows cannot reach. But at the same time, they can also browse on those low plants in the grass. Then also, if you look at the eye, the eye has long eyelashes and the eyelashes are helped to protect the eyeball when they're grazing in these very thorny prickly plants but also to keep out the sand and the dust from the desert life. They even have a third eyelid which during dust storms can close up and also help protect the eye from the dust. Another adaptation of the camels is they have very concentrated urine so the kidneys recycle the moisture in the kidneys so that the, the urine comes out very concentrated. And in very dry and hot conditions, instead of just urinating as she is today, she will actually cross her back legs and she will urinate down her back legs. And that acts like a radiator. As the urine evaporates on her skin, it cools the skin and it cools the blood. And that means she doesn't lose so much water, her body temperature is kept low, and she doesn't start sweating so quickly. In, a, in addition, the body temperature of camels, again, a lot of these adaptations are to save water, because water is one of the most precious and most difficult to find uh, commodities or items that the camels require when, when they're in the deserts. And so you'll find that their body temperature can rise by up to six degrees during the course of the day. So they start in the morning cool and then as the day gets hotter, they allow their body temperature to get hotter and hotter until it gets to about six degrees higher, about 40 plus degrees and then they will start sweating. But all that time they're not going to sweat until their body temperature reach, reaches its maximum. And in most cases, if that was the case for cattle or for humans, people would die. They don't have that thermolability that camels have the ability to have. So also physical adaptations that the camels have. They have what is called a pedestal, which is this hard, bony lump under the chest and they also have very thick calluses on their knees. Now, when they're sitting during the day out in the grazing lands and it's very hot, they will, this pedestal lifts their body off the ground and it allows the air, the cool air, to pass underneath and over the camel. So that is another cooling mechanism that camels have evolved. In addition, you'll see that the hair, depending on what sort of conditions there are, the hair can be very shiny and sometimes it's short and shiny, other times it's longer. But the, the reflectiveness of the hair also reflects the, the radiation from the sun. It's like a mini albedo effect. So that with the white hair, the shiny hair, the sun's rays are reflected and the body doesn't heat up so much. 
Here, that because of the colder weather, we've got much thicker wool there, but we do have some camels, and you'll see many of these camels are whitish in colour. And that is to reflect the heat of the sun. Also, if you dig under the, under the fur, you often find that the skin itself is dark. And again, this is to, again, control the heat and the absorbing heat into the skin rather than into the body. So you will also, also notice that the humps of the camels are strategically placed on the back here so that all of the fat in the camel is stored in the hump. Many people think it's a, a water storage system, but it's not a water storage system. This is all solid fat, and there's less fat in the rest of the body, but this also insulates it from the sun. Fat is a very good insulator. It stops cold and heat, and so this is again stopping the, the heat of the sun from getting into the blood and around the body. Another advantage of the hump is that in the dry seasons, if there is less food or if there's a drought, then the camels will start utilizing the fat that they've stored. And this fat, when it's metabolized within the body itself, it turns into water and energy. So that again is topping up the water in the body of the camel and it's also providing energy for it to walk further distances to find enough food. Another adaptation, just as the kidneys concentrate the urine and are also recycling the water, that means that the dung, the feces of the camel, are very dry. It's not like a, a cow's dung. You'll find that the, the camel produces very small dry pellets so it's losing very little water through the dung and through the defecation. All of these are vital for its survival in the desert. So if you look at the nostrils of the camel, another water-saving mechanism is that inside the long nose that they have, are a lot of very fine bones, terminal bones, and they have lots of little holes in them. So when the camels are ex exhaling their breath through their nostrils, you'll find that the air, the water in their, in their, the air they're breathing out is condensing on those bones, and then it starts trickling down from the nostril, down this little cleft between the lips, back into the mouth. And so it's again a way of saving water. It's recycling the water and not losing water to the environment. If you look at the behaviours of camels, you'll also see that not only do they sit huddled together, but also stand, all facing the same direction. This morning, they're just warming up in the sun, they're enjoying the sun. But when it's the middle of the day and extremely hot, and if they're dehydrated, you'll find they'll also all sit facing the sun, minimizing their body exposure to the, the sun's rays. So again, this slows down the rate of heating up. When it's cold, and you can see that a little bit with the calves, they also all sit together, huddled together to keep each other warm. Then ad additional advantages of the camel is that they can reach very distant grazing fields. So in extreme cases, they can be grazing up to 100 kilometers away from the nearest water point. And then they'll go for water every 10 or 14 days. And that's far beyond the distance most other animals can reach. And also when they do graze, they separate out. They don't remain as a bunched herd. They separate out and they start there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and they start uh, taking bites from each plant and then moving on. So they're not always just eating the whole piece of grass, the whole, the whole tree. They're taking a bite here, a snack there, 
and moving on to new bushes. And they don't like to go back to the same place to graze each day. So each day they will move slightly further away from the place they grazed the day before. So they're not having such a big impact on the environment and on the grazing. So in terms of the climate change adaptation, uh, they're very well adapted to climate change because climate change is bringing increasing temperatures which the camels are in a, in a good position to, to control themselves. Uh, climate change is bringing more frequent and longer droughts and also more intense rainfall and, and so they're well adapted to coping with drought, being mobile, uh, having very efficient digestive systems. Again, their size makes them able to have a, a lower metabolic rate than the smaller animals like sheep and goats. So they don't expend so much energy in terms of just staying alive and digesting. So in terms of adaptation, they're very well adapted. But in terms of mitigation, we need to do more research on that because yes, Livestock, all livestock do emit a lot of methane, either by burping when they're chewing the cud or when they, at the other end of the animal, farting away. But uh, with camels, it's tests done in uh, Switzerland have actually shown that camels produce less methane than cattle when they're kept under the same conditions. But one of the big problems is that they're very slow at reproducing. So you're not going to have as much meat produced and as much milk produced as rapidly as cattle do. Um, cattle will be starting to produce milk at perhaps two years of age, three years of age, and ready for slaughter at three years of age. But the camels will only give birth for the first time at five years of age. And then they'll be pregnant for one year and the calf will be, they'll be producing milk for one year. So that means basically they are slow producers. And that means that in terms of methane emissions, they could actually be higher than some of the other livestock. So those are issues we need to research and to really find ways of improving the breeding rate so that they are not so, so slow at breeding. And if we could have examples like sexed semen um, or embryo transfers where we're, in, where we're transplanting female embryos, then that would actually speed up the efficiency and make them much better in terms of climate mitigation. Thank you. I'll put my hat on before it gets too hot. <laughs> Come sail, come sail.